as spring blooms into full swing, there is nothing like cooking with fresh vegetables. I'm so excited to share with you today some fresh and new German spring recipes that we have been loving lately. Our garden is finally producing and here I am harvesting artichokes that are ripe and need to be eaten and rhubarb. I learned that rhubarb you want to harvest no more than two-thirds of the plant in the spring and you kind of have to twist and pull instead of cutting off the stems. I'm going to cut off the leaves and put them in our compost because they are so, look at how big they are. And I have all these stalks and the artichokes to bring back into the kitchen. I'm washing the rhubarb stalks. There's a lot of dirt still on them, garden soil, which is not actually bad. It's full of B vitamins and micronutrients. But anyhow, for this meal, I'm going to cut, cook the, not cut, cook the artichokes and I have a pot that's just big enough to fit them all in there. I don't like to snip the leaves or anything, just really put them in there and that's pretty easy and simple. And for that, I like to make a aioli. I have my homemade mayonnaise. This really couldn't be simpler that I'm just adding to a bowl here, um, just as much as I think I need. And then I have some garlic cloves that I'm cutting up and I will put through my garlic press in a moment that you can see here in the foreground and that makes my garlic aioli. I'm going to leave a link for both the avocado oil mayonnaise in the description box below as well as for this garlic press because I think it's fantastic. I think theoretically you could just put the garlic cloves through there without peeling them. I like to peel them because I feel like it gives me more garlic than if I didn't peel them. Just give this a swirl around and then we're going to eat them. We're going to dip the artichoke leaves in the aioli. The next day, I didn't get to the rhubarb the day before and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the rhubarb, but I feel like there is always something you can do with compote or actually you can also make it a jam. So rhubarb, rhabarber, compote, rhabarber marmelade. I'm cutting the stalks into smaller pieces and it really doesn't matter what color the stalks are. Even if they're green, they're going to be ripe. And as you could see, my rhubarb plant was pretty big and the leaves were huge. So this was definitely ready for harvest. And I'm just going to put them all into a bowl and then I'm going to add some sugar to it. That will help draw out the juices. And then you don't need to have to add so much water to the rhubarb while you're cooking it. I'm going to swirl this around and over some low medium heat. I'm going to put the pot over the stove and then heat up the rhubarb pieces. I'm adding just a little bit of water and you can see that I have some cornstarch there. I thought I needed it, but then I ended up not needing it. And again, the full recipe link is in the description box below if you'd like to make this. And like I said, this could either be a jam because it was stiff enough or it can also be just for eating right away. I love adding a dash of vanilla. It just complements the rhubarb flavor so much. And if you'd like to preserve the color of the rhubarb a little bit more, you can add some lemon juice or some citric acid. Here you can see it has a nice pink color and I love these little corkin jars from Ikea that have a rubber band around them and a lid that you can clamp closed and so I'm going to use that for the majority of it. This is a small batch but you can easily double or triple the recipe if you'd like to make more if you'd actually like to can more for the future and have throughout the summer. I have another measuring cup here. I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to put that right in this measuring cup because I know we're going to have it for dessert. And here it is, my little batch of rhubarb jam or compote. For my next meal, this is going to be eggs in mustard sauce. In German, we call that Zenf. Eier. 
Aya and Senf Soße. I'm just going to make a simple roux, melting butter in a pot and adding some flour and mixing that up. And I'm going to cook it a little bit over heat to get a good start here. And then I have some bouillon or some bone broth, whichever way it works best. And I'm adding it slowly to the butter flour mixture and swirl it around. I know that my mom dumps the whole liquid into the pot right away and then starts stirring it. I find that I get a little less lumps that way if I just go in smaller amounts and let it cook and then whisk it while I am cooking it. And then I'm going to let it cook down just a little bit so that the mixture can thicken. Also, I'm trying to gather all the little bits that are hanging around the edges of the pot. I love to add a little bit of milk just to make it a little bit creamier and make it a richer taste. And over there, I'm going to start boiling the water for my eggs. I have an egg prick. I'm also going to link a, leave a link for that in the description box below because a lot of people are asking me, where do you get that? And when you prick the eggs, they don't um, crack while you're boiling them. To the mustard sauce, to make a mustard sauce, I'm adding a lot of mustard. Swirl that around mixing it in. I like to add just a dash of sugar, not to make it sweet, but just to round out the flavor. And a little bit of lemon juice to brighten up the flavor, some fresh ground black pepper, and some salt. And then you just basically go ahead and taste it. And you can always adjust the seasonings a little bit to your liking, depending on what else you need. Adding the eggs to the boiling water. We like eggs that are soft boiled, which means the hard outer egg whites and the egg yolks are still soft in the inside. Some people like hard boiled eggs and I'm just peeling them here. This is a little bit tedious and I know there might be simpler methods, but some eggs are actually really easy to peel and other eggs are a little bit more resistant to letting go of their peel. To make it look a little bit prettier, I'm chopping chives and to dish it up, I'm adding the potatoes. What's a good German meal without potatoes? And the mustard sauce, the Senf sauce, and two eggs. And to make it all pretty, I like to cut the eggs in half so you can see what's in the inside. You have the egg yolk that's a little soft still and runny on the inside. And they are so pretty because they're um, farm-raised eggs and pasture-raised eggs, chives on top. And for the next meal, I am making a sour sorrel soup or French sorrel soup. I'm looking at my grandmother's antique cookbook here, and it says that every garden should have sorrel. But I remember making this recipe before, and my family wasn't really keen on it, so I'm adapting it a little bit by adding potatoes. And the potatoes I'm peeling with my vegetable peel. If I have a little gadget or utensil in my kitchen that I'm using all the time, it is my vegetable peeler. I'm also going to leave a link for you if you are interested in that. And from my garden, I have these wild onions or spring onions. I'm going to cut those up a lot because they're going to be the basis for my sour sorrel soup. And I'm going to saute the onions in melted butter. Here I'm adding them to the stock pot. And I love that I have both the green and the white parts. And they're very delicate and um, have a bit of a taste between somewhere between an onion and almost a little bit garlicky. It's a very nice taste. If you have them growing in your area, I um, highly recommend that you check them out and try them in your recipes. Over here is the sorrel, which is growing like weeds in our garden at this point that I'm going to add here to my pot. I could have also added the sorrel at the last moment because it doesn't really need to cook all that long. But, you know, the recipes say um, cook it all that long. So next time I might actually add it at the very end. I'm adding my bouillon here to make it a soupy recipe and then my potatoes. The smaller you cut your potato dice, the faster it will cook and they make this soup really creamy and substantial without you having to add a lot of, let's say, cream or anything. 
I'm checking the potatoes for doneness. Yep, they are done. And with a immersion blender or stick blender, I'm going to blend the soup into a very smooth, silky consistency. Fresh ground pepper is always a good idea and seasoning with some salt. Again, I like to add just a tad of sugar and some actually some sour cream because I think that it does, it does add a lot to the flavor of the soup. It complements the sourness of the sour sorrel really easily. And um, here are my beautiful lion head soup bowls, another dash of sour cream. For this night, we were making pizza and I had found white asparagus in Germany. This is asparagus season. We call it Spargel Saison. And I found it in the grocery store and I really wanted to make something with it. And I thought that, oh yeah, I'll um, make another video for you guys to see how we eat asparagus Spargel in Germany, but I couldn't find it anymore. So here I am making a pizza. I'm adding sour cream to the pizza dough, which is a sourdough pizza crust, obviously, and then some prosciutto, which is one of the ways that you can eat white asparagus. And I had cooked the white asparagus before. I'm going to show you that later in the video, how you can actually cook the white asparagus and bring out its delicate flavor, but also make it really yummy and delicious. In hindsight, I should have cut up the asparagus a little bit before I added the mozzarella because um, otherwise it's a little bit harder to eat, but it was super delicious. My husband puts it in our uni pizza oven that we love and actually use quite a bit. Look at that flame back there. Those pizzas only need 90 seconds, maybe two minutes at the most to cook, and they're always so delicious. There's a bit of an art turning it the way that pizza yolas do it, but it's just really fun. And who doesn't love a good pizza? Now I want to show you how I make the green asparagus because I know that most of you will probably have a harder time finding white asparagus. I know I did. And I was told that there was some heavy rainfall in Peru where the as white asparagus is mostly coming from. And they couldn't, I don't know, couldn't harvest the asparagus or couldn't deliver it or I don't know. So anyhow, I am just going to use green asparagus and heavily peel it. You typically don't need to peel green asparagus. You only cut off the, the stalk here ends, but I actually peeled it. And to my cooking water, here's the little bit of the secret. I'm adding salt and again, just a little bit of sugar and butter. That's really important. I found a lemon in our garden, so I'm adding lemon juice. So the sweet and the sour and the salty and the butter. And then I'm adding my asparagus stalks to the cooking water and I'm boiling it for about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. You're going to have to check for it and done this. And another cast iron skillet over here, I'm melting some extra butter. And this is really our favorite way to eat asparagus and adding breadcrumbs that I make from our own stale bread if we ever have any. It's actually so good. I was thinking about making a hollandaise or a barnaise or something creamy like that. But you know what? I really love the butter breadcrumb mixture over the asparagus. Then I had already boiled some potatoes and you want to get the best potatoes that you can because they will, you will really notice a difference if you use very good potatoes like um, Dutch yellow potatoes or um, Dutch babies um, or German butter balls. And to dish it up, here is the cooked asparagus. And you can always save the peels and the water to make asparagus soup, which I couldn't do as much in this video as I'd wanted, but let me know if you'd like to see that recipe. And again, good German dish always has some potatoes on the side, and then I'm sprinkling the butter breadcrumb mixture over the asparagus. And I have some black forest ham here that I'm rolling up in little rolls and adding that. And that is for me, is just mm, such a good meal. It reminds me so much of Germany and the green asparagus isn't exactly like the white asparagus, but if you can't find it, that will work in a pinch. Here it is. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.